Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to deal with the relationship of a circle drawn inside, fitted inside, a square. The square being on the outside exactly as shown here, square being bigger, and the circle is only touching the square's sides at four points of contact in the middle of each side there, four point contact. In this geometric arrangement, oh, this geometric arrangement is a concern to a number of people in different occupations such as pipe fitters of all kinds, boiler makers, metal fabricators, carpenters, electricians, just to name a few. For example, in an electrical context, the circle, the area of the circle, is the area of the around conductor, around wire, in its cut across cross-sectional area. This cross-sectional area can be measured in circular mils in North America or square millimeters or whatever and the square around it or the side length of the square to be more exact is the wire gauge the diameter of the circle or the side length of the square so how the wire gauge and the cross-sectional area of the wire relate to each other that this, this is the same geometric relationship so there's Examples abound. I don't want to give you more examples. I want to get going with this uh, geometric explanation here about this number that you've seen in your calculations probably. I'm working with the glare here. So 78.5% if you want to look at it that way. This number is telling you by how much is the circle smaller than the square. If the square is being 100% and this formula here is the area of the uh, circle here and this formula here the side length lowercase a and that uppercase a is being the area of the square it doesn't say the square but if the area of the square is being 100 percent then the area of the circle will be about 78 and a half percent whatever plus change it's an infinite decimal number it keeps going exactly as you see it on the calculator here and you might in your line of work work with this number truncate it to four decimal places and the, your instructor might have explained it to you this way that here are the seven eight five and four on the calculator so you go around in a clockwise direction starting with the seven in the upper left hand corner when you enter the number in your calculator so just go point seven eight five four so there that number is close enough to for most calculations to this number and if you want more decimal places so that they are sorry working with the glare here so in this video I'm gonna focus on this 78 percent number again it's important for comparison because this is a comparison I know area of a circle is not measured in percentages but this is a comparison and comparison is given in percentages so if the square is 100 percent in terms of area then the circles area is about 78 percent now if you consider the comparison backwards if you consider the circle to be 100 percent then the square will be bigger about 127 or some such thing it's gonna be something like that a number like that let me just put it on the calculators display here that number so 127, so 27% bigger, the square is 20%, 27% bigger than the circle, but I'm going to focus on the comparison being done this way, starting with the circle, sorry, starting with the square and the circle being second. So this number is, uh, I'm going to explain how this uh, number 78.5% uh, comes about in a geometric kind of reverse engineering or backwards uh, logic uh, explanation here I have another explanation that's a forward steps uh, sequential steps explanation I'm going to include a link to that video in this video's description box below and I think that that video is titled what the heck is 0 0.7854 so that's going to be a forward explanation without geometric detail this is going to be a geometric variant but the steps taken backwards arriving to this 
0.7854 number being correct. So, like I mentioned in passing, the side length of a circle, sorry, the side length of the square here, marked with this blue A, is the same as the diameter of the circle. This is how a wire gauge works. We measure it like this. So I'm replacing the letter A, lowercase a, because it's super confusing with the uppercase A, with the diameter, with the D. And again, as a memory jogger, I am, I don't know if I mentioned this, probably not, that this 0.7854 number is pi divided by 4. How do I know that this is pi divided by 4? I'm going to have a geometric and algebraic proof here side by side. So, all I did was I colored this extra 20 something percent extra meat around the circle, just showing the circle is smaller, the square is bigger. I just moved it out from one corner to another, so that's the area for calculating the area of the square. I know squares don't have diameters, but in this relationship, they do now. And this is just a well-known formula for the area of the circle. So what I'm proposing here is that the area of the circle here, this, is the same as, I'm replacing the equal symbol with the words is the same as, the area of the circle is the same as the area of the square. Okay, let's just stop there. Obviously the square is bigger, so they are nowhere near equal, but there's a modifying to the area of the circle, so the area of the square. So the area of the circle is the same as the area of the square modified by about 78%. This number is pi divided by 4. So I'm going to move to words to prove that they are, that the pi divided by 4 is actually correct geometrically and algebraically side by side in backwards steps. To do this, I'm going to get rid of almost everything just going to repeat this equation up here and I propose just for a reality check here to substitute in the, the amount 5 sorry the amount 5 for radius and diameter will be obviously 10 twice that and for pi just so we can do this mentally I know pi is not 3 but let's just just for easy mental math let's put in 3 only 3 but 3 equally to both sides. So let's check it if this one works so far. So I propose that this will equal to that. The area of the circle will equal to the area of the square lessened by this 78% number. So the radius squared 5, 5 times 5 because that's what squaring means that you times it by itself. 5 times 5 is 25. Keep the 25 in your head. 25 times 3, 25, 50, 75. So this side of the equation is 75. The other side here, diameter, let's square it, so times it by itself. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 3 quarters. What do we do with the fraction? Just work with me. A, hundred, a quarter of 100 is 25 because you have 25, 25, 25, 25, that's the four chunks of 100 and you have three quarters. 25, 25, 25, you have 75 on this side here as well. 100 times three quarters is 75, just like this is 75. So if pi is replaced by just three, this one still works. The area of the circle is exactly as big as the area of the square lessened by this 78.5%-ish number. Let's move along. To make this equation simpler, let's do a straightforward algebraic step. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 4 to get rid of that division, so we don't have a fraction in it. When you multiply pi divided by 4 with 4, you're just going to end up with pi. When you multiply this side of the equation by 4, you're just going to have one more number 4 here. Now this can be, because this is a multiplication, and this is going to be important later, 4 times r times r, times in by itself, 4 times r times r times pi is the same as pi times r times 4 times r, or 
in any order because multiplication is commutative. Over here, on the next step, both sides of the equation feature pi. We can divide by pi, both sides of the equation. Pi divided by pi is 1. The 1 doesn't get written down anywhere because it's usually not necessary. Over here, same thing. And you can see at this point that if this becomes 4 times r squared times 1 and this becomes diameter squared times 1, that's how they look like. At this point, they are still equal. The area of the square is as big as 4 times the radius squared. Over here, I don't have a circle anymore, but I have the same size as square. You see the red line in it? That's its radius. The blue line here is the original diameter or side length of the square. And this line here states that if you square this radius, you can have a square made out of it. And that square will fit four times into this bigger square. This is how that looks like. I just squared the radius and made a red square out of it and four of these will fit into one such uh, big square. This is based on the fact that the radius is half the diameter and the diameter here is the same as the side length of the bigger square. I hope this is perfectly logical. Likewise, if you double the, double the size of a pipe, let's go to a pipe fitting uh, context for just one sentence. If you double the diam or di double the size of the pipe, you're gonna be having four times the area. So if you have a small pipe with uh, I don't know a, a three-inch pipe, and you double it to a six-inch pipe, the six-inch pipe will be carrying four times the capacity of the water that the three-inch pipe did same pressure, same slopes, and you're not messing with anything else. Okay, so double the diameter, it's gonna get four times the area. On a, or double the pipe's size, you're gonna get four times the area. At this point, the equation is proven to be true geometrically. But, I can show you algebraically to end up with two equal sides or two identical sides of this equation and it's fairly straightforward. Let me just show you. I'm going to take apart this 4 as two, 2 times 2. This is called expanded view. And I'm going to take apart the radius that I referred to many times. It's times in by itself, r times r. And if I write it out it looks like this fairly straightforward. I did the same with diameter, d times d. Because multiplication here is commutative and you can multiply these four numbers in any order you like, it will still work out to be the same number. I can rewrite that this arrangement of letters here this way. You can see where it's going. Twice the radius is essentially a diameter. There it is, this is the last step. Diameter times diameter is the same thing as diameter times diameter. So this lower part here just shows algebraically what this square arrangement here shows. That, and all of these steps show to explain that the original amount, pi divided by 4, was inserted correctly into the original proposition which states, let's go back to that, that slide, which states that the area of the circle is equal to the area of the square if the area of the square is modified by this magic number. So these steps here that we did, these steps here prove that this number here was inserted correctly. Two thumbs up for it. So, let's go back to the first slide. This describes the relationship of a circle fitted inside or inscribed into a square that's uh, inscribed this way geometrically. And this is, this is also how 
a wire gauge number also relates to the uh, cross-sectional area of a wire or pipe fitting uh, context, whatever. This number 0 0.7854 for decimal places is typically used. This is where it's all coming from. Thank you very much for watching.